no Shrai is going to get back on. Of course, they're adept at it. They're very, very good descenders generally in riders who have been drop rulers, sprinters, things like that. But it's flying down here already. They're going to have some work, some chase. Yes, it's full on down here. And uh, when you get over the top, sometimes if it's... Uh... I've got the timing screen opened up. See if we can see who got that Shima copy. I've seen it reported on a couple of the live tickers that it was Pelizzari. Sort of looked like it might have been that way. That's the case. He moves up. And as I say, it flashes on my screen. The winner of the Chima copy this year is 20-year-old Giulio Pelizzari, the youngest rider in the race. We know that the Paso Cell is not the highest point in the race, but it's where they've decided to award Chima Coppi, given the fact that we were supposed to go higher than the Motolino after the Motolino before yesterday's truncated stage. Head of the race now is Emmanuel Gebrek Xavier. Just start to see some damp patches and uh, the great campionissimi, the grande ciclismo era of Italian cycling. It's amazing to believe that this man had to wait so long for his contract. This Giro performance, you'd sign him up for the next few years. So, so good for teammates. And he can attack the race himself. We already saw this when he was working for Nibali a few years ago. Nibali wasn't having the greatest Giro, and Gebrek Xavier started getting himself in breaks. Here he is at the front of the race, climbing with the best, descending like a demon. Yes, well, descending really well. We can see uh, Julian Lefleet there just, uh, you know, what, 20, 25 metres off there, and... Uh, yeah, not exactly in the wheel, so that tells how quick he's going down here, and uh, he is a talented rider, and he's having a great Giro here, and great to see. On the way down to Canadze, the goods. Lovely part of the world. Giro. And look at this. Ala Philippe, he's got the multicoloured numbers today. That's because he was both most combative rider, red number, and into Giro Sprint winner, green number. If you can already spot his usual style, you'll know who he is. And already consuming that sort of day. Fueling is vital in modern cycling anyway. Even more so today with all they're taking on. And he's not waiting up for Jan yet. <laughs> and to our viewers, yeah, there was talk about who was going to look after the uh, team... Uh, uh, the team leader in the general classification, but yeah, that will have to wait for another day or we'll be waiting for the end of the day. UAE, the, the tempo they were riding, oh. I thought, oh, this, this could just be a, as we've said it so many times now, ground pog day, they're just doing the same thing. His teammates just ride because they love to see him win. But uh, is that Michael Storer? It's Michael Storer and fellow Australian Luke Plapp just behind him. Juan P. Lopez is the leader track rider in third. Now, what are you going to do? Let's just go again. So. Gebre Gazabi does exactly that, it goes again. And we just saw Rafael Marker gesturing to Kevin Vermarker. Oh, hey, Zander. if you're going to do it, keep doing it. Look Zander. at the panic yep. in the background, out of the yep. saddle. Uh, in the red and dark blue of Jacob Alula. That Filippo Zanna started the day in eighth place on the general classification, was distanced on the descent mm. leading into this third category climb. Uh, that was a big old chase, though, on the climb itself, which you could pay for yeah, later. Yeah, it was, it was a big chase, and uh, the riders who were 8th, ninth, and 10th in Tana, his teammate, sitting behind Pellizzari. Yeah, so Pellizzari wants to take the nine points on offer at the top of this climb, which is now just 300 metres away. A uh, reminder that the difference between first and second across this line is five points, and so nine for first, four for second, but he doesn't want to bring Quintana to the line with him. And well, this has become fascinating now, the yeah. way it's played out, because there's there's been very little textbook about this race, and, and today's stage has just gone, gone next level. 
So, Gebre Xavier of Lidl Trek takes the nine points on offer at the top of this climb. Uh, Pelletzari, wow, he's not even going to get second. That goes to Steinhauser. Is he even going to get third? Ooh. No, I'd behind Tadej Pogacar. Yeah, as I said before, I thought that competition was basically done and dusted at this point in the race, but with that Chima copy added to the pass of Sella at the start of today's stage, it's not. I still... Bonus seconds, not an issue anymore for these guys in this race. Interesting to see what happens coming over, because, of course, one bonus second available. I mean, most places in the G, certainly, if you're challenging Pogaccio, you need much more than one second. You need an absolute miracle and probably a restart of the race. But it's Sudal Quickstep with... Hence the German-speaking regions in Italy. Well, let's go and talk now to Adam Blythe, who's on the bike. Adam, good to have you with us. I don't want to interrupt your entertainment too much because you have got a front row seat to what we're watching, but... Hello, what are we watching? Roberto. Well, it's interesting you say that. I heard you chatting about I'd be doing that today. Small little three, four K climb, six K climb. Let's hurt the legs at 30 seconds behind. Let's push on and hurt the legs. I think at this stage in the Giro, every little acceleration they do, they're gonna feel it. And if you're doing too many of them, you might feel it even more at the end. That's fascinating, Adam, just those micro battles within the race. I'm glad you're keeping an eye on for them, of course. We're looking about the stage as well. We've got two riders up the road here. How do you see the stage going now? We're going on the Paso Brocon, the northern side of the climb, and then we go down it again, up a different side. What do you think is going to happen here? Sorry, Rob. I've got some flipping... Oh. Oh, what's happening Sorry, to mate. you? Sorry, mate. I lost you. I always have these people coming in my ears and talking. They're talking again now. I just caught a little glimpse of it. For Stephen Roach and that 1987 Giro d'Italia. We'll know, but it's not a strictly a mountain top finish. There's around six k's flat after the top of the final climb well, before they lot, get to Sapara. There's, there's a long way to get there. Uh, for me, I call it a mountain top, but for you, Robert Timer, it wouldn't be. A... <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it's not. It's not as uh, big as the ones we've had. We certainly have, you know, the real big ones. Domestiques uh, and, and most versatile domestiques in the in the bunch. Nathan, what about this domestic here? He's got 114 on his back. His name is Emmanuel Gebrek Xavier. Lidl Trek hadn't re-signed him until the end of January this year. And the more I watch, and everyone at home is going to think I am a stuck record. I apologise for that, but this guy deserves some recognition. He has been indefatigable since the start of this race and whenever I've seen him throughout the spring. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I, I never, never really raced a lot against him. Um, so I... Images yesterday and seeing what way uh, the uh, other uh, challenges were looking and uh, they feel that they can do something here and they're just making it really difficult on this uh, first time up this climb and still, you know, it's just under 40 kilometres to go. It's just all about oh, setting this real killer of a pace and just burden people and if the fatigue is in with somebody, well then, over a long period, that's the way you can really break them. Here come Needle Trek. Looks like the figure of Jaroslav Popovic. Some sustenance, some food, and one minute, one second. It's nice. He also asks uh, the F rider to uh, if he needs if, if he needs anything. Uh, there, actually, this is a team now. They need they need each other to. Uh, apologies, I was <laughs> I was counting him out as being gone, but he's still in this leading group. Maybe the bus is too far back. <laughs> But I pick I picked him for uh, for Adam, so I hope he doesn't have his his ticket for the bus yet. Well, he'll be getting it later. <laughs> he he did try today, and you know uh, a guy you know coming from where uh, Quintana has been in his career, and you know you get into the break and we say, oh yeah, this is it, this is the break. We're going to get six or five or six minutes here, and I can have a good chance in this sort of terrain. And then when you get caught, you know the. You, you drop the head a bit easy as you get later. He's fading here. Yes, he is fading, and uh, uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, uh, you know he's been out a long time today. He was in the earlier break of the day as well. Um, 
and uh, we see Marco Frigo as well, another one who was in the break. Weather on this side of the mountain, though, it's a little bit more slippy, the rain's falling again. Welcome back, and the weather's changed again. Stage 17 of the Giro, and you're looking at Emmanuel Gebrek Xavier getting all ready. Or he's really holding on now, doing really well. That's Gebrek Xavier, he's caught. We're not seeing a gap now from the front of the race to the Magyar group. That's disappeared. <laughs>